Let's pray. Father, we thank you again for another opportunity to be here. Father, we thank you again today for all the blessings of life that you have bestowed upon us, Lord. The tragedies happen. The things of life become so unimportant. And Father, we, we thank you again today for your mercy and grace to us this week. Lord, I pray for this dear lady. I I believe her name is Amy, Lord. I think that's her name. And Father, I pray for her today. I pray for her husband. His name's Kevin. Lord, I pray for the whole family, Lord. They're just devastated, really. But Lord, we're thankful that you know best. Sometimes, Lord, it's hard for us to see. But Lord, somehow or other in the grand scheme of things, you do know what's right and what's best. Lord, I pray for the whole family. And I pray, Lord, you help them. God, I pray for a miracle. I know that you can do it. Lord, I I know that miracles are not something that happen every day now, but, Lord, I have no doubt that, Lord, you could do that if you wanted to do that. We pray for the mind of Christ, and Lord, that your will be done. I pray for today and for us here. Lord, I thank you for all the folks who have come out this morning. And again, I ask, Lord, that you'll bless in the few minutes we have together. Lord, I thank you for this day. Lord, what a great day it is when we think about the resurrection of Christ. And Lord, all that it imparts to us, all the blessings that we have because of that. Lord, we are so thankful for that today. Again, Jesus, we we do thank you for those that have come. We pray for those who are unable to be here. But, Lord, we are here. And, Lord, we do do desire a blessing. And, Lord, we do desire to be encouraged and lifted up. Lord, we pray again, as we have prayed many times, as we have prayed today already, that the Spirit of God would be present in this place. I ask, Lord, that we lay aside everything that might hinder the Spirit of God today. And Lord, that we might sense God in this place. That Lord, we might leave here rejoicing that we have met with God today. Lord, I pray that there would be nothing that would hinder uh, the work of the Spirit today. And Lord, that you would encourage us this morning. I think of the song we sang. Uh, Faithful and true would he find us here if he should come today. Lord, may that be true of us. If you should come today, Lord, bless, we pray now, and uh, the few minutes that we have, because, Lord, surely we'll be on our way home in just a few minutes. Bless us, we ask in Jesus' name, and for his sake, and for his honor and glory, we ask all these things. Amen and amen. All right. Anybody got a question today? Anybody got a question about anything? If you do, we'll surely try to answer it. Anybody got a question today? I'm glad everybody's Bible scholars knows everything, but that's uh, all right. Gone once, gone twice. Galatians chapter 2. Galatians 2 today. In our study of this book, reminding you again that the book of Galatians uh, has to do with law and grace. And in the end of the middle of chapter 2 to the end of chapter 2, Paul discusses that a great deal. He says in verse 20, let me put my glasses on. He says in verse 14, no, not verse 14. He says in verse 16, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ. Man is not justified by keeping the Ten Commandments not justified by keeping any of the commandments. Matter of fact, the Bible makes it clear. James says this, that if we offend in just one point of the law, that we are guilty of the entire law. So if we have ever told a lie, that means we're guilty of all 660-some points of the law. And uh, no man is ever justified. Nobody can keep the law. All the law shows to us, as I've said many times, is that nobody can keep it. That's what it shows. And so Paul hold, Paul's whole discussion in the second part of chapter 2 is uh, emphasize that. We got to verse 20 last week, 
I am crucified <coughs> with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself, who gave himself for me. Jesus willingly gave himself for us. We looked at Psalm, I believe it was 84. Uh, he is a sun and shield. Uh, and it says in Psalm 84, 11, no good thing will he withhold from them. Uh, uh, Romans 8, I believe it was verse 32, somewhere around there. He that spared not his own son, but freely gave him up for us all. How shall he now also freely give us all things? I mean, uh, I, I, I would ask you uh, uh, this question. The answer to this question would tell me in a lot of ways how you see grace. We sang this morning, faithful and true would he find us here, Luke 17, 8. When the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? When Jesus comes, when Jesus comes, could come today, when he comes, what is your attitude about Jesus' coming? How, when, when you think about the coming of Christ, that he is going to come, that he will return, what is your attitude? How do you feel about that? Well, I hope he doesn't come today. I hope he doesn't come today. <clears throat> Others have the idea, well, if Jesus came today, I would be glad to see him today. However, I'm not sure you'd be glad to see me today. Because I have failed. Now, if I ask this morning how many people have failed today, probably everybody would raise their hand. Folks, I remind you that when Jesus was, who gave himself for us and died for us on the cross, and as John said, the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world, the Bible says that he has forgiven us. How much of our iniquity has he forgiven? All of it. All of it. Every bit of it. Now, again, I know that people sometimes find that to be unfair. Because they'll say this, I'm trying to live a good Christian life, and I know somebody that is saved, says they're saved, they're not really living the way they ought to, and you're telling me that when we both die, we're both going to go to heaven and all of our iniquities have been forgiven. No, I'm not telling you that. I'm telling you the Bible's telling you that. They say, well, what happens when we get to heaven? What is going to happen? Isn't there going to be some kind of an accounting? Absolutely. There is a book of remembrances. Now, if, if you think that when you get to heaven, that, boy, there are some things that I have done in this life, that, boy, and all of us have done things that we have regretted doing, that we're ashamed of, that we don't want anybody else to find out about. Boy, I'm going to have to answer for some things when I get to heaven. No, you won't, because Jesus paid it all. Now, there, now, there, now there is, there is, and it kind of, you say, well, again, that's not fair, preacher. Well, you want to be fair? Is that what you want? You want God to be fair? Do you want God to be fair? No. Because if God was fair, he sent everybody to hell. If he was fair. We're not talking about being fair. We're talking about the grace of God. That's what, that's what it, this is all about. Every religious system in the world can be put in one of two categories. Everyone. I don't care what it is. There is the system of doing, and there is the system of done. When Jesus died on the cross, I think he said seven things on the cross. What was the last thing that he said? Finished. It is finished. It is finished. The plan of salvation. 
Now, we realize that he had to arise from the dead, but the fact that Jesus willingly gave himself to pay for all my sins. See, when, when you really stop to contemplate that, when you really stop and think about that, then you begin in some sense to be, realize just how marvelous the grace of God really is. Because not only did he save us from all the, the sins that we have committed, but he saved us from all the sins that we're going to commit. He paid for them all. Look, if you would, at, uh, we'll look at 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Now, Paul said there in Galatians, Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. <clears throat> and 2 Corinthians, no, no, I'm sorry. Wait, I, I'll find it. I know where it is. It's somewhere. Uh, it's chapter 5. Not chapter 10, but chapter 5 and verse 10. Chapter 5, verse 10. Now, I want to say this before I go any farther. People misuse the grace of God. And they think that because they are saved, okay, well, I can do this and I can do that. Now, look. First of all, we need to be careful about when we, we, we judge people and say this or that about them. But we also need to be aware that the Bible says there are some things that are wrong and that we ought not to do them. Now, you say, well, what are the consequences of sin today, preacher? One, there is broken fellowship with God. Boy, if you want to have fellowship with anybody, it's with God. And so when we, when we sin... We break fellowship with God. And so we need to have that fellowship restored. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, you don't need to look at it. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us, wash us from all unrighteousness. Now, so there's broken fellowship. There is broken fellowship. Um, there, there, there will come a point. I don't know when that point is. I don't know when you cross the line. I, I don't know when, when God gives up on you. I, I don't know when that is. But there, there can come a point in your life where if you are saved, if you are saved, you can come to a place where God will take you out. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, we read it sometimes on our communion, our Lord's table day, for there are many who are sickly and some who sleep because they would not judge themselves because they lived a life that was kind of wicked. You remember the guy in 1 Corinthians that was living in incest with his mother? Paul said that ought not to be, and Paul said his stepmother. He said, we're going to deliver him up to Satan that the spirit might be saved. Uh, they, they were, he was going to be destroyed. This body of flesh was going to be destroyed. You see, if you're truly saved, uh, there's that word again. If you're genuinely saved, if you're that, if you are that, and, you know, you can't keep living the way you were living. I'm not saying that we don't sin, because we do, and they're forgiven. But we're now talking about a testimony before the world. Now, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 10, it tells us, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Every one of us in this room, every one of us are going to appear at the judgment seat. <coughs> Excuse me. You say, when is that? Well, as far as I can tell, when Christ takes the church out before the marriage of the, of the Lamb, the judgment will occur. Now, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Now, some would take this to mean, well, I think that means, preacher, I, I believe that that probably means that we'll be judged for our sins. No, we won't. We will not be judged for our sins. We will not be. You say, yeah, but I've tried to live a good life, and I know other people, man, they were just, they didn't. That isn't fair. Well, that is because we have a tendency to want to categorize 
how bad our sins are. Wesley, John Wesley said, if you want to call jealousy or envy like sins, he said, you can. He said, but I choose not to. The Bible seems to indicate that they are. But So in 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 5.10, every one of us in this room, if you're saved, gone up here before the judgment seat of Christ to receive a reward. Now, look real quickly at 1 Corinthians 3. Paul gives us a little more detail on that judgment seat in 1 Corinthians 3. And verse 11 says, For other foundation can no man lay, and that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. That is the foundation upon which we build. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, Christ, it's like, remember the parable Jesus gave of the man who built the house? One guy built it on a rock, another guy built it on the sand. If we build our house upon the rock, the rains came down, the floods came up, the rains came down, flood, the rains came down, flood came up, and the house on the, on the rock stood firm. If we build our house upon the Lord Jesus Christ, bad things may come our way, but the house will not fall. Now, if we build upon this, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work will be tried. We're not saved by works. We're not justified by works. We are not kept by works but our works will be tried. You've heard me say this many times. Let's see if you remember. What are the two clearest verses in the New Testament on salvation? Anybody remember? Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. But what about verse 10? Somebody look at Ephesians 2, 10 for me. Read it. What's it? Oh. Go ahead. So we have been saved, and now that we are saved, then we ought to have some good works about us. We ought to have some good works. You ought to be doing so. Everybody, I've said this. Everybody ought to have a Christian service of some kind. Doing something. Like what, preacher? Well, sign up for church cleaning. Uh, we have work days. Show up. Look, when we have dinners. I'll say it's because she's not here. But I know that every single Sunday that we have a, a dinner... I can tell you just about who the first person will be in the kitchen washing dishes. This is Burbank. Now, I know that others help. I know that. I'm not discounting others. You say, well, I wouldn't wash dishes, preacher. There are probably a lot of things you wouldn't do then. But that's a Christian service. Can I remind you that even a cup of cold water Given in my name, we'll receive a reward. See, God wants to bless us, and God wants to reward us. And every man's work will be tried of what sort it is. And we have been saved by grace, through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. But we have been created for good works. We ought to be known as the church that tries to outdo the next guy. What is it that I can do? to help somebody in this church. What is it that, and everybody's capable of doing something. Now, it, it says there, every man's work will be tried. Now notice, it shall be made manifest. There's a book of remembrances. God's keeping a record. God sees. God does see. <coughs> he sees. Now, again, we're not talking about sins here. We're not talking about that. We're talking about our works. 
what we've done, whether they were good works or bad works. Now, the only way to pay for sins is in hell. The wages of sin is death. That's the only way to pay for them. You can't pay for them any other way. You can't go to purgatory and pay for them. Jesus was our purgatory. When he had by himself purged our sins, you can't, you can't well, let's you know, go to purgatory for 10,000 years, then get out, then you go to heaven. Uh, that won't happen. But our works are going to be tried. Our works will be tried. Now, we cannot be tried for our sins. But the bad things are bad works that we have done. And I, I'll leave that up to your imagination, what that may or may not be. But since every man works will be tried for the day, so manifest it. For shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. The fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Question, you know, is what's the fire? What is the fire that tries us? I, I would suggest to you that Jeremiah said, thy word was as a fire burning in my bones. When it says in Revelation chapter, what is it, chapter 20 about the great white throne, it says this, and the books were opened. What books? Well, I think these 66 books. I believe the book of remembrance. Those books will be open. Now, there will be a third book, the great white throne, the book of, of life. And whosoever is not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Now, the book of life. Now, this particular judgment seat of Christ, that book will not be present because we are saved. The saved will be there. Now, every man's work will be tried of what sort it is. Now, may I remind you that every dollar you ever gave to missions. Matt? I think you're right about what book's going to be open because it says the word of God is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. There's no other book that can do that. Absolutely. So the word of God is going to be there, and it will judge you. The word itself, I mean, Jesus is the judge. All judgment has been committed under the Son. He will be the judge. Every dollar you ever gave to missions. Every time God ever impressed upon you to do something. I, I've said before, I'm, I, my thing is this. When the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith in the earth. Have we been faithful to the opportunities that we have been given? All right? There are many opportunities that you have in life. You have the opportunity as a parent to raise your children in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. Have you been faithful in that? Have you been faithful as a wife? I, I don't mean the, the, uh, the running out on your husband kind of thing. I'm not talking about that. But I'm talking about being a, a faithful help me to your husband. You know, I told, who did I tell? Oh, I, I know who I told. Who would you tell, preacher? I'm not telling you. But I'm telling you that, that when God, way back when, the Bible says we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Way back when, there's Adam. Adam did not need somebody to race elephants with. Adam did not need a fishing buddy. You get one of those popeel pocket fishermen, you know, for that kind of thing. Adam did not need a fishing buddy. Adam was totally incomplete without Eve. God made Eve. Now, I, I tell people that are getting married this, and, you know, it's like the guy said, if I can understand my wife for just five minutes, the guy said, well, you got the five minutes right. But, you know, it's like, it, you'll get that. But anyway, it's like, uh, women are really, please, ladies, don't stone me. Women are really strange creatures. 
They're wonderful creatures. They're, they're, but they, <coughs> fellows, I'm telling you that women are 100% totally different than you are. It's just what they are. They're just different. Men, men see a straight point, they head to it. Women think circularly. They say, well, I want to get over there, but I'll go over that way, and then I'll cut back this way, and then I'll cut there, and then I'll, go, then I'll finally get there. It's the way women are. What'd you say? All the stores they stop at. Women, you know what? Do you know? Hey, hey calm down. I should have never went here. But anyway, I'm not saying it's bad, ladies. You know, women love to shop. They can go all day and not buy anything. Yes, they do. Okay, all right. Let me, let me just say one. Let me say, let me say two words. Shut up. But, but men don't like to do that. Okay, all right. Bass Pro Shop. All right, okay. okay. But Gander Mountain. Okay, all right, enough. I'm just saying that women are totally different. They are totally different than men. And, you know, you spend your life trying to understand them. But without them, I'm telling you, without them, without women in this church, this would be a pretty sorry church. Um, I, I never know quite how to say this. I ought to say this. They always smell better than men, don't they? I don't know that smell is the right word, but I'm not sure what the right word is. But have you been a faithful wife? Have you been a faithful husband to love your wife? See, those are the kind of things that will be judged on. Have you been a faithful dad? Have you been a faithful son? Um, <laughs> I'm not saying that, that fathers and sons don't have disagreements. My dad and I did when I was growing up. I, I don't want to say it's part of being a teenager, but, you know, the world in which we live, sometimes it is. You remember that, that story about Mark Twain? When a kid turns 13, you need to put him in a box and drill a hole in it. And when he gets to be 18, you need to plug the hole up in it. You know, that's the kind of thing. Look, I'm not saying that my parent, my my. My dad said to me one day, if you don't change, you're going to have to leave. He said, you're driving your mother. It was a short trip, but he said, you're driving your mother crazy. You know? <laughs> My dad and I had our go-arounds. But one day I grew up. I grew up. And right, wrong, and different. And I can look back, and, and I knew that there were times that my dad had been wrong. I knew that. I knew that. But my dad wasn't going to admit that. And being brick-headed, I tried to convince him of it. It never worked. I grew up. Right, wrong, up, down, black, white. I wrote him a letter. And I told him I was sorry for being the miserable kid that I was as a teenager growing up. And he came to me, and he said to me, you don't know how much I appreciate you writing me that letter. Faithful. Faithful. Have you been faithful to the opportunities? Have I been faithful as the preacher in this church? Have you been faithful as... Members of this church, have you been faithful? Jesus said that, that uh, you've been faithful in a few things. Be thou ruler of many. What will the judgment be? We'll be judged according to the books. And we will be judged, I believe, according to the faithfulness to the things that have been written in this book. Have you been faithful? You say, well, I haven't been saved a long time. Doesn't matter. Matthew 20, the story is very clear. The parable is very clear. Some worked for 12 hours, some worked for one hour. Everybody got a penny. 
for a whole day's work. Why? Because those that worked for one hour were faithful for the one hour. Those that worked 12 hours were faithful for the 12 hours. Everybody was faithful. Everybody got a reward. Look what it says there now in verse, verse 14. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Gold, hay. Uh, not gold, hay. Gold, silver, precious stone. If any man's work shall be burned, if your works are burned up, why have you done what you did? To be seen of men? For the glory of our Christ. Why is that you ever sang a special? Why do you want to take up an offering? Why do you want to pray out loud? What is it? Why do you do what you do? For the glory of Christ? Or for the glory of self? You know, most people, most people say, I want God, what God wants as long as it turns out to be what I want. God, whatever you want, it's okay with me as long as it's what I want. No, can you honestly say and pray, thy will be done, Lord, in my life? Have we been a good testimony before the world? Have we been a good testimony before the world? Have we been faithful? I'm not saying have you been perfect. But I am saying the only Bible that the world will ever see many times is you. Have you been faithful? People look at you and say, well, that guy says he's a Christian, but I hardly ever see him go to church. That guy's a Christian, but him and his wife fight like uh, 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 lost people do. That guy's a Christian, but he treats his father like he's uh, 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 a no-good, low-down, two-time, whatever. That guy says he's a Christian, but he's not very kind to his mother. Many, 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 a long time ago, I, had a, I preached a sermon one time, the meanest mother in the world. Somehow or other, it got back to my mother. She never, she, she, she said, why'd you preach that sermon? Uh, because, it, you know, it wasn't that she was being mean, it was that she loved me. She was trying to teach me to do what was right. I would say we need some more mean moms today, but you know it's like my it's like it's like my brother wrote uh, the other week that for whatever reason I don't know what the reason is you know he was somewhat uh, being reflective about mom and he wrote some things and he said to how that sometimes you know mom would you know be kind of harsh. But she'd always say, I love you. Boy, if, anyway. But now, Lotus, what it says, I don't know how we got this far stream. I know we're talking about I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth within me. Now, every man's work will be made manifest. If your work abides, you're going to get a reward. And there are several different, there are at least five crowns, and there are some stars, and and uh, maybe there's some gold in the crown and silver in the crown and precious stones in the crown. All those things. Going to get a reward so that in Revelation chapter 4, and they cast their crowns. Hey, we're going to get a chance to cast their crowns at his feet. Well, you have a crown. Because look what it says there. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved. Still going to be saved. You don't lose your salvation. You don't lose your salvation. You're still saved. But you won't have a reward. And John encourages us to be careful, and, and second or third John, be careful that we lose not the things that we have wrought so that we receive a full reward. It's possible to have, you know, gained some things and then lose those things. The Bible just, the Bible encourages us to be faithful. Are there times we get discouraged? Sure. 
There are lots of discouraged people in the Bible. Elijah said, God, just kill me right now. John the Baptist, Lord, are you here? Should we look for another? Do we get discouraged? Sure. Do we get down sometimes? Sure. But are we faithful? Do we get out and walk on the water with Jesus? Sure. Do we sink sometimes? Absolutely. But just be faithful. And that life that we're living, the life that we're now living, I, I, I'm crucified. I was crucified that day on the cross with Jesus. My sins and my uh, the handwriting, the, the bill of indictment that was against us was nailed to the cross that day. And so, I, I, how's that song uh, go? Uh, what's the song, uh, uh, Peace Like a River? Uh, my sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin, not in part, but the whole, is nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, oh, my soul. Uh, that's what Jesus did for us. And now that I am crucified with him, the life I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Listen, we're, <clears throat> we're to be different, and we're to be faithful so that at that day we will hear those words. You know, really, just to hear, well done, thou good and faithful, faithful servant. You think back. Think back. Think of how many people you know that started the race. And as far as we know, saved. Born again, washed in the blood. But for whatever reason, they quit. They no longer run the race. They gave up, surrendered, threw in the towel. Well done, thou good and faithful. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. See, the Lord doesn't ask us to be faithful over a lot, just a few. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. Be thou ruler over many. Jump back quickly. Galatians chapter 2. Now I have been crucified with Christ. I am not my own. Where's that verse? Somebody, somebody I know knows this verse. What? Know you not? You're bought with a price. Corinthians, you're not your own, but I, I forget exactly how that verse goes. What? No, you're not. You're not your own, but you're uh, whatever. Uh, we are not our own anymore. But do you realize, you do realize this, before you were saved, you weren't your own either. Because you were under the control of the devil. And brother, he's a hard taskmaster. He's a hard taskmaster. But boy, when we were redeemed, I have a song I love to sing, Since I Have Been Redeemed. Brother, since I've been redeemed, I've got a new song, and I've got a song in my heart. I like, <clears throat> I'm not always crazy about uh, everything everybody writes. I think Gaither wrote this. I have a song in my heart that the world never gave me. I have a peace in my heart that the world never gave me, and a peace that cannot take away. I think Gaither wrote that, I'm not sure, but. Well, we, we've got something now. How many worried last night when you went to bed if Iran was going to nuke us? I didn't think about it. I think it, I don't even know what time I went to bed. What time I go to bed last night? It was so late, I can't even remember. It was so late, it was this morning, I think. But it's like, you know, I, I hooked my machine up so I can breathe at night. And I was asleep within like 30 seconds. And like, I woke up, I said, what happens if the house burns down? Well, so it burns down. He said, that's pretty cavalier. Nah, I don't want my house to burn down. I don't want things to go badly. But I have something in my heart that now gives me a purpose and a meaning. Now notice quickly, verse 21. 
we'll finish chapter 2. I'm just going to say this. We're going to stop here in a minute. Now, it said, uh, 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 by the faith of the Son of God who loved me, I guarantee you, I got to say this. When I started saying about how do you feel about Jesus coming back today, how do you think he feels about you coming back today? He's looking forward to seeing you. He wants to see you. He loves you. He died for you. He gave himself for you. Why would he not be happy to see you? It's going to be a happy day. It's going to be a glad day. It's going to be a great day when Jesus comes. Every, every, all of our cares, all of our troubles, all of our trials, all of our tears, all of our tribulations will be gone. And he's going to be happy to see us. Now, verse 21 says, I do not frustrate. The word frustrate there means to cast away, to deny, to despise, to reject, or to make it void. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, if we are made righteous by keeping the law, then Christ is dead in vain. If I can go to heaven by this other group of doing, doing, you got to do this, you got to do that. If I go to heaven by doing then this over here, Christ said it is finished. Look, if then Christ is dead in vain. Christ is dead in vain. But, what's that verse in 1 Corinthians? I know it's chapter 15. But now is Christ risen from the dead. And it's become the first fruit to them that slept. I do not frustrate. I do not deny. I don't cast it away. Paul said, I don't despise the grace of God. Trying to attain righteousness by the law, he said, will never work. So anyway, all right, look, we're through. Women do love to shop. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again. <laughs> Father, we thank you again for this good day. Thank you again for your love and your mercy. Thank you for the grace of God. Lord, I do not even begin to think that I understand it. But, Lord, I thank you for what I do understand. I thank you, Lord, that you love an old sinner like me who had never done anything for you, but curse your name. Yet you love me, and you gave yourself for me. And not only me, Lord, but for every person in this room. But not only for every person in this room, but, Lord, for the world. Oh, Jesus, how we thank you so much for loving us. Lord, bless the next hour. Lord, we pray. Lord, I pray you'll bless us in the next hour. Give us a good service, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.